Uh, yeah, well, right right now, with the outcome of uh, all our infrastructure being more and more programmable, networking is also a part that is going to be programmable or at least software defined. Which is programmable. Yeah, oh well. <laughs> uh, it's how you phrase it, right? Yeah. Uh, but there's there's a whole lot of different things about that you have to think about when you move from right now the not software not software defined networks to software defined networks and there's now a lot of new possibilities. I, I totally envision dynamically reconfigurable and automatically configurable net configuring networks. So uh, Ronnie's going to talk about that and uh, he also did a presentation on the last... Uh, on the falls. Yeah, oh yeah on, on the last conference. Is, is this presentation complementing that or building upon that or is it... It's, uh, it's building upon that. So yeah, that, that was more uh, uh, about the, the DevOps side of networking um, and I think that uh, software defined networking uh, is indeed uh, helping uh, bringing the DevOps to the to the network people, and also bringing together the the, the, the network and the, and the systems people. Okay, that's great. <laughs> we are one team. Take it away. Because, yeah, thank you. Because in the past there was a, a big wall between the network and the and the and the system teams, and I think that that wall is disappearing, at least slowly. Um, yeah, I'm gonna talk about uh, these things uh, in the next uh, 45 minutes. It was right. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, so um, to begin, um, um, a product manager from uh, Dell said a couple of, a couple of weeks ago uh, at the Network Field Day, um, CCIE certification. We don't need it anymore. Um, we have now uh, new nice things that uh, your your networks will be uh, automatically built, automatically, uh, automatically configured. So throw away your CCIE certification, learn Perl, Python, and you're done. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is in the unicorn world. Um, there is still uh, not of a lot of network knowledge needed. Uh, just talk to the during the lunch said to someone you really still need uh, to, to to know uh, the protocol layers and everything uh, to build networks uh, but later on to debug them um, in the in the fall last year my wife went to a uh, garden con uh, conference um, I hate those conferences so I don't go there um, but this was uh, in, the, in the keynote, trends you need to watch. And, well, I think it's all, it's all software defined. Um, so, yeah, we are in a, in a, in a, in a nice uh, um, time frame. Um, things are changing. These are all the new things that, that are coming. So, yeah. Um, Elaborating on the on the last one, um, organizational arrangement and disruptions. So this is um, what that means for uh, the organization: um, a, a growth in IT complexity, um, faster change cycles. DevOps is, uh, is uh, really helping that, um, and we see uh, uh, shifting in skills. And that's what I meant with uh, the, the network and Unix people. Well, their, their, their skills complement more and more. And of course, always uh, reduce budgets. Um, at the Snow Unix event a couple of weeks ago, Mark Burgess uh, showed me this slide and I, uh, I stole it from him. Uh, first, uh, humans learn it. Learn a skill. Um, 
So they configure a machine, they configure a network, and then um, they do that faster because their fingers um, uh, learn to uh, type those commands faster so they can reconfigure more machines in less time. Um, so, yeah, they repeat like a machine. Later on, they write a script to do that. So the machine imitates a human to do the command line things. And, well, this is where the network kind of stops and where uh, the systems world went further, in my opinion. Um, so we are currently at a state where we are writing scripts to uh, do screen shaping of the Cisco CLI, of the Juniper CLI, and to put in commands and hoping that the commands that we put in there, um, well, the device configures them correctly. Um, whereas in the, in the Unix world, well, we have uh, promise theory and we hope uh, that we put in some files and they get picked up and everything. It's, it's, it's a lot better and the uh, Unix machines go to the central device, they, they pick up their, their configuration there and in the network world we still have to push new configurations to the devices. So this is where we are right now, maybe a couple months ago, and software-defined networking is really helping us to get to cross this boundary. It's, it's giving us, or I hope it's going to give us the APIs uh, and the possibilities to uh, uh, configure that network automatically. Um, Google, hello, JC, <laughs> uh, was one of the first to have a big, huge operational open flow network. They committed to it um, in uh, 2012, 2011, with its operational in 2012, and um, um, they built a, a, well, huge, it's only a couple of routers. Um, they committed to it and they, 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 uh, they wrote their own code, of course they did everything, writing their own code. They also uh, built their own hardware to do it. But yeah, they committed to it, they believed in OpenFlow and it's really helping them. Because uh, the challenge they had uh, in that time was that they could <coughs> utilize their, uh, uh, this is all LAN by the way, not WAN, at least their LAN, um, and they could uh, uh, utilize that for about 60%, 70 maybe. And um, with OpenFlow, there, there was the possibility to uh, utilize the network for 90, 95, even 100%. Is that right, Jesse? I, I cannot comment. <laughs> <laughs> That's Google speak of, yes. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, in 2012 they uh, committed to, uh, to OpenFlow. Um, personally, at that time I think, well, leave to Google and we'll see uh, what that brings to the rest of the world. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it seems to, to also come to the rest of the world uh, pretty fast. Um, this year they uh, committed to another thing coming up, Network Functions Virtualization. And um, a couple of weeks ago, they announced that they uh, are, are fully using uh, Andromeda uh, to uh, uh, fit, virtualize network functions. And I will uh, later explain what that means. So yeah, another new thing that Google commits fully to. Um, so yeah, what is this uh, SDN thing? Well, the um, traditional uh, change approach in the, in the network is, well, we're building a network, there's a network architect that designs a network, 
Um, he writes a physio document, uh, or word document. <coughs> and uh, yeah, that's it. That's his network design. He gives that uh, to a, a network engineer, and the network engineer is going to build some some uh, configurations with that uh, design, and is going to build a, a lab. Uh, yeah, to uh, accommodate that, and uh, out of that comes some golden configurations for yeah. This is what the network should be. Well, they bring that uh, into uh, operation, so they build the network, um, and then it really goes into operation, and the network changes because of needed functionalities because of problems that exist in the, in the network and the network operators change configurations in, in the network and the architect is really lost to how his design has grown um, yeah, I, I see this in a lot of big companies, service providers um, Yeah, and the, 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 there is a, a and I, I think DevOps is, 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 is really changing this. Um, and the only thing you, you could do, or they could do at this moment, is daily backups of configurations. And if something, uh, uh, a change in the network of the network breaks, uh, then we can refer to the last known working con configuration. Now for DevOps in, uh, in uh, networking, we have the same architect, we have the same uh, uh, engineer, and we let them work together on a single database, uh, or a single application, or uh, we let them work together. And from that uh, uh, database, you automatically generate network configurations um, and um, script them out to the uh, to, to the network. Kind of what uh, 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 puppets she mentioned do in the, in the in the Unix world. And then the uh, the architect and the engineer, everyone exactly knows how the network is is configured because. In the previous time, when you had to uh, to do a, a new change in the network, the network was the documentation. You had to go to the network. Can we implement this change? Can this router take this command and well, that kind of stuff? Um, in a new situation, you exactly know how your network is configured. You exactly know what kind of services you are implementing in that network. So you can push them out. Um, this is uh, kind of uh, how, how we, you can do it uh, with current uh, Cisco, Juniper, uh, and other CLI devices. But this is also um, a, a picture that you can use uh, for uh, SDN or OpenFlow, where this is um, not. Um, just a database to push scripts from, uh, scripts from, but this is your central controller of the network. Um, so yeah, um, if you can push new configurations to the network automatically, you can also break the network automatically. Um, that's, uh, what, that's why we have the same picture we say, well, you first try things in the lab environment before you push them out to the real life network. So you make changes, you make scripts and everything, test them, put them out in the real life network. Even better, you test it on a development database and um, copy the, the, the working uh, changes to the uh, operational database, production. And even better, you have an acceptance part in your real life. 
So yeah, this is truly implementing the DevOps methods into the network. And yeah, you can also translate it to the uh, software-defined uh, solutions. Can I ask a question? Yeah. What is it exactly that you're pushing into the network? Is it things like, is it configuration or is it or is it programs? Okay, there is there is two answers to that. One uh, one is uh, configurations. Uh, that's in in the in the in the, uh, in the old days, uh, as to say, <laughs> with the the, the, the uh, CLI driven uh, uh, devices. You push you push configurations to the uh, to the front. So that's real Cisco commands, uh, configure terminal, blah blah blah. Um, and uh, in the uh, uh, software defined way, uh, you push uh, forwarding entries to the, to the devices or interface configurations. So you don't push programs. Okay. Does that answer your question? Uh, I think so. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, I'm probably a bit confused by the software part of it. Then. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm my opinion is that the software defined part is a bit confusing indeed because um, uh, that's why I think progr programmable networking is a better way uh, because the software defined part is more on top. Uh, but I think uh, when I get to the open flow part, uh, that will explain a, a bit better uh, why they call it so software defined. Um, and by the way, um, Everything is software defined these days because it's it's a hype term, and because it's <laughs> it's it's a hype term. Well, you you can software defined wash everything. <coughs> you know, in my opinion, everything is software, even this thing on on this desk. Um, today's challenges in the in the data center. Um, we need agile service delivery. Um, um, there are. Still, currently, a lot of silos, domains, and layers in the in the network. Uh, different departments that work together uh, or do not work together. I mean, um, there's a lot of security uh, uh, that you have to go through. Uh, Multi-tenancy, uh, so multi multiple uh, uh, customers in a in a data center. Um, one thing coming up is service chaining. Uh, so. Uh, Connecting multiple surface, surfaces um, in, in, in one uh, uh, as one uh, application surface to the to the customer. I will um, come to that later. Um, there is really a need for a programmable API, better than the, the current uh, CLI, um, and also the right cost for the right solution because. Um, it has to be cheaper and cheaper uh, these days. Um, well, these guys um, have all already built it, and it's now uh, uh, well coming up to uh, to coming to the rest of the of the world. Um, yeah, these guys really solved these these challenges, and 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 are, are even even solving more uh, uh, challenges. So what is a typical data center these days? Um, well, of course, uh, when, when I go to Amazon and uh, uh, I, I, I uh, order a, a virtual machine, I, uh, I need some uh, memory and, and compute. That's, uh, that's the first part. Um, I need uh, uh, a network, and on the network I need some uh, security. And of course, I need uh, some some storage, and that's why I'll, that's where I also put the availability part, because the other parts you uh, uh, you can uh, uh, make availability by uh, putting more more machines uh, uh, to the network, or uh, making the network more redundant. But you can lose your data by losing uh, losing it on the storage. So by having it. Uh, uh, always available in the storage, you can always give, um, a, a deliver it to the customer um, 
on new machines, on new parts of the network, new uh, uh, zones uh, in Amazon, for example. Oh, and of course there is uh, uh, management and automation on top of that uh, to configure those uh, in the data center. Um, so yeah, um, we have uh, uh, we have a hypervisor on the, on the machine. There is storage on the machine, uh, multiple physical machines, and there is a network connected. Uh, uh, there is a virtual network connected to the to the live network. And this is to say that the hypervisor is the new commodity in a data center. All the other things, storage. Uh, uh, machines uh, uh, that is uh, uh, um, uh, compute and, uh, and uh, memory and the network are all built on top of the hypervisor. And this way you can build an application centric infrastructure. And the application centric infrastructure um, is, is the infrastructure that you can um, define policies on. And policies to de deliver those applications to the end customer. Um, so a typical data center has, has racks um, with uh, a top, top rack switch and in that switch uh, some compute uh, uh, and or uh, storage nodes and uh, those are uh, for the network at least connected by a, a leaf spine concept. So that you always have the shortest uh, path to your uh, neighbor um, neighbor closet. So every top frag switch is, is connected to every spine, uh, uh, spine switch, which is connected to every uh, other other top frag switch. So so your uh, neighbor is um, no more than, than than three devices away, two links. Um, and I, I only put um, the, the physical uh, um, connections in here because what you see this, uh, what you see nowadays is that there is a um, a virtual switch in every uh, node, and this virtual switch is connected um, to the rest of the network. So how does this uh, um, um, look like? You have the a machine, the hypervisor, with the virtual switch uh, um, in it, and multiple uh, uh, VMs. The virtual switch is also a VM, by the way, um, in, a, uh, in a machine. And those uh, VMs are uh, um, multiple tenants, for example. And Two neighbor virtual machines, uh, machines want to talk to, to each other. They do that through the, the virtual switch in the, in the same uh, device. And if one of those is in another machine, physical machine, the two virtual switches build a tunnel together and you talk. Um, like on a layer two, which is routed through the rest of the network directly to your neighbor VM. And if there's another um, tenant in the network, another um, customer, um, that can also talk to his neighbor uh, VM in another rack through the same way. And this is all being done by, by tunneling protocols. Which, which encapsulate uh, the, the Ethernet frames on, on one side, put it uh, on the network, and decapsulate it on the other side. And this is how it works. Um, there is um, um, an operating system on, uh, on one side that has an IP address and has, and has a, uh, a MAC address. He uh, is talking to the, to the virtual switch on that side, and his frame gets encapsulated this way so this is um, um, what was on this uh, local network 
and this is um, these are the public addresses that uh, of the uh, physical machines. This gets encapsulated in 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 this uh, uh, in these frames. Same to the other side, get decapsulated, and uh, out it comes again. So on top. Um, there's a, a, a virtual network where these two uh, can see each other um, on the layer 2, uh, like di directly connected. But there is a whole rooted network in, in between. So, yeah, um, Ethernet used to be simple. This is um, Ethernet uh, once. And this is um, um, uh, with all the encapsulation uh, on top of it. Um, here, here you see you have the original uh, layer 2 frame. We put a VXLAN header uh, in front of it. I use VXLAN as an example, but this can, all, this can also be GRE and NVGRE. Um, the, um, Another UDP header, IP header, and uh, the last is the, uh, the other MAC header that uh, gets on top of it. And that goes to the other side. Um, an an analogy in the, in the real world, I, I would see this, is Amazon. Amazon is doing tunneling. Um, Amazon has packages. As Amazon wants to deliver something to your house, they put it in a box. They put a label on the box, and they give that um, um, that box to a transport provider, UPS in this case. It gets routed through the country, through the, through the world, and you decapsulate it again. And well, there comes your gadget. A uh, book. Um, some people already call this SDN. I call it overlay networking. But yeah, th th this is the SDN washing that is uh, going on at the moment. When we call this overlay networking, there must be an underlay. And, uh, well, this is where the, re the real new things are happening, in my opinion. Um, so, when we have traffic lights in a, in a city, um, a couple of years ago, every um, uh, crossing did its own traffic light magic. A couple of sec seconds red, a couple of seconds green, and you had some st stoppings of, uh, uh, of the traffic in between. And nowadays we have something uh, called a, a green wave in the, net, uh, in the uh, traffic. So we let them um, all work together, all those traffic lines, by a central controller. And that's where, where uh, um, the analogy to the underlay network comes again. If we have a central controller that knows everything about every node in a network, we can uh, uh, build flows in a network. Um, and um, um, do, some, do things with, with those flows that you could not do before because every router and switch in the network was working independently. So, where the fine networking is decoupling the data plane and the control plane um, of, the, of, of the network devices. So, this is where we come to the definition of real software defined network. It has, it has a logical centralized control plane. And it's also giving you a programmatic interface to, to the network. 
if you have a, a switch, a hardware device, uh, then, th then that thing has, has a data plane. The data plane is where the packets or uh, frames flow through. This is, this is how you are um, talking to the internet or to, a, to the server on, on your network. To um, control the data plane, we have a control plane, which is saying, well, this is allowed from there to there, or uh, uh, um, this, is, uh, 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 this is coming in there, and you need to go to that server, oh, that's that port. That's all being done by the control plane. And on top of the control plane, um, I ha have what I call uh, apps. And that is an app for the layer 2 with all the ARP and everything uh, for the layer 3 with the routing protocols, um, a firewall, and all the apps that you can think of. Um, in a Cisco device, you, you, you don't see them as apps. Um, but uh, making a step to the uh, software defined network, I now call them apps. And there was a management plan. Um, CLI by Telnet or SSH, um, and uh, SNMP, maybe NetConf. Um, yeah, that's it, right? well, most of the times. Making a step to OpenFlow. With the same switch, still has a data plane, it still has a management plane, because you have, to, you have to do some basic configurations on the switch, you have to do uh, uh, sometimes uh, software upgrades, those are all being done by that simple uh, management plane. Uh, but it's all talking to a centralized control plane. And on that uh, centralized control plane, you have those apps again. And because the centralized control plane has, uh, now has a programmatic API, you can build apps um, on top of the whole network. And I'll come to, to some use cases later. One of those apps uh, is uh, Open Daylight, which is a, uh, well, a, 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 um, an open source project to build an uh, a, 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 um, uh, open source uh, SDN controller, uh, more than OpenFlow. So how does this OpenFlow work? We have uh, two, labs, two laptops on, uh, on each side, one with IP, IP addresses, And in order to um, uh, let them talk to each other, I have to install some flows into the network devices. So on this switch, I'm saying if the IP destination, is, if it's going from uh, with this max, uh, max source, uh, everything, max destination, everything, um, filtering on the IP destination of 5678, I am sending it out to port 24. Um, if, if the, uh, so this is uh, port 24. If the IP des, uh, sorry, port 24. <coughs> um, if the IP destination is 1234, I'm sending it out on port 25. And on this guy, I'm saying that um, 1234 is on port 1, and 5678 5, is on port 48. This is a very simple. Um, uh, flow, but I can do more more advanced things um, um, with these filters and take actions more advanced. Um, and these uh, uh, filters and actions, I can I can put them in there uh, proactively. So I can tell the controller to install those flows in those devices. Um, uh, once they uh, proactively, so, so, so once they uh, uh, know them, or reactively, so that these flows are not known to the to the uh, devices, and when this guy wants to send a ping out to the other one, 
Um, it's, it, it, it's a new frame. There is a, a last flow, uh, a, a, a last rule. Um, if it's unknown, send to the controller. And that sends the first frame to the controller. The controller knows uh, all, all these uh, filters and actions and it sends back. Well, um, thank you. You, uh, you can send it out to, uh, to that point. Here yeah, it's the same thing, and you can send it out to the other point. And the same for the way back. So that means when you first start to pin from that one to, to that one, the first pin, well, in, I have a mini net implementation, it takes about uh, 800 milliseconds, whereas all the next pins, 15 to 20 milliseconds. Well, this is uh, uh, kind of what you could do in, uh, uh, well, an example of what you could do in Outflow uh, 101. Um, all, all, all the fields that you can, uh, can match. And in uh, 103 and 104 that are uh, 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 coming out, 103 has come out, and 104 is coming out, uh, it's a whole lot bigger. So more and more possibilities to, uh, to filter against. And this is the kind of actions that you can uh, take. So the easiest one was forward, forward with uh, uh, another port. But you can also do some, some rewrite uh, uh, things. Uh, you can push and pop VLANs, you can push and pop um, and PLS tags and everything. And this, is, and, and this is where the software defined part comes in. Because you can, you can write applications on top of the, uh, the overflow controller that um, uh, really uh, programs these actions into the network. The Overflow Networking Foundation is the, uh, uh, the organization that is, is um, uh, developing, defining um, this Overflow protocol. Um, first spec uh, is of uh, 2009, founded in 2011, and it's, 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 it's really uh, pushing forward. Uh, one thing that is a bit strange to me is that the ONF is totally apart from the ITF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, where all the standards until now um, have been developed and defined. Um, and that's, um, they say that, that the ITF well, is a bit slow in new developments. <laughs> Why they were taking that out. Another statement I want to make is Overflow is a, is a software-defined uh, uh, network, um, but software-defined networking is not Overflow. Um, the Open Daylight project uh, is um, a daughter, I think, of the Open Linux Foundation, uh, of the, of the Linux Foundation and they are developing uh, an open source as Django children. Um, 36 members, and those are really large companies like Cisco, uh, Juniper, uh, Red Hat, IBM, all, all working together to uh, to build an open source SDN console. Uh, yeah, I, I really believe in this project. Um, it's, it's, it's still a bit harsh. They did the first release a couple of months ago in February. Um, I think it's not not, not yet fully uh, production ready, um, but, but we're getting there. Um, and this is a screenshot of their, of their, their, their GUI um, with um, net, the, the network uh, topology as, as discovered with the flows um, uh, implemented in uh, one of those uh, of nodes. Um, this is the application framework uh, uh, they are building. And this is, 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 is really um, a, a, a nice framework, um, well, I, I, th I think to change the world uh, of network. Um, they're really trying to encompass uh, uh, southbound south protocols that are already uh, functional uh, today, uh, including uh, netconf in, in most of the devices. So, um, 
this is an application that, that tries to build a, and, and configure uh, networks of the new OpenFlow enabled devices. Uh, the open fee switches, like I told you, but also trying to configure some uh, traditional CLI driven de devices. Um, with nice northbound uh, protocols uh, on top, uh, including uh, OpenStack. There are other SDNs. Um, between quotes, because um, uh, this is all the SDN washing that's going on, I think. Um, single fabric uh, 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 networks, so one uh, completely spine con uh, concept, uh, Cisco ACI, for example. Um, you could call that um, uh, an SDN where you configure a whole kind of uh, uh, Lot of switches for one controller. Um, <coughs> then there is white boxing. Um, Linux Linux is, uh, is coming up. A, a small, uh, and, and, well, I think very good, small, fast Linux um, that can be installed on, on uh, white boxes so from multiple multiple vendors with standard hardware, Dell for example. Open flows, same thing. You can install the same open flow on several switches from, from several vendors, um, which is a bit different from how you do today because you have either Cisco or Juniper or you name them. Um, and there is some, some config management uh, uh, tools that configure the network um, and they will also call that as the end. Um, skipping this one. Um, yeah, um, um, taking one step to uh, network function uh, virtualization. Um, this is uh, uh, the amount of uh, one and uh, 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 internet ports that uh, are uh, being sold in service. Um, more tankic ports than one gig ports uh, ports today, and this is the forwarding capability of. Uh, 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 the, uh, the processor, and that is really uh, now going to uh, uh, 150 gig. So this makes virtual switching possible, and so this makes it also possible to to implement network functions into software. Um, virtualized network functions that uh, uh, are today bu uh, 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 built on uh, proprietary hardware. Um, um, the Etsy, uh, there's a working group there that is um, defining that, and there are some big network operators, those telecom, for example, that are pushing that. Uh, one example that you can do uh, 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 with uh, uh, network function virtualization um, uh, is uh, service chaining. So today, um, you uh, are connected to a, to a network provider and um, you are always pushed through the same network functions because that hardware is in the, in the part of your network. Um, what you can do with network functions virtualization is on a per user basis, build some policies where you can find, well, user A is, uh, is using uh, the, the firewall, user B is uh, 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 doing some uh, uh, deep back inspection, and, uh, so on a per user basis, build some policies. And that is um, uh, programmed internet into the network by flow. Um, I'm running out of time, so I'm not doing this one. No. Um, my company won the hackathon on uh, the Open Networking user, user Group by building an app um, on top of uh, OpenFlow. Um, if you want to play yourself with uh, OpenFlow, with, uh, do some software-defined networking yourself. Um, the first thing uh, uh, you can try is uh, go, to, go to Mininet, download it, install it, and you have uh, uh, a, a, a full functional uh, OpenFlow uh, uh, network with multiple switches and hosts um, uh, in your 
uh, in your computer. Um, you can also go to uh, opendeadline.org uh, and uh, there are some, some uh, uh, images available um, with uh, uh, a complete uh, open data controller uh, with a mini net uh, network. And there are also some, uh, some images where they included uh, open stack, uh, dev stack uh, to, to really show how open stack and uh, open data can, can work together. Um, we have some, some uh, challenges to, uh, to solve. Um, these are them. And I think it, this is a good thing uh, that uh, we are really ch uh, changing the network right now. Uh, it's going to be more and more open and the network and systems are, are coming together. Any questions? No, I'm too late. Uh, with all the encapsulation uh, going on, do you consider MTU be an uh, issue for the underlying fabric? Um, yes and no. Uh, 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 no, because uh, you, you have to uh, uh, keep the MTU, MTU everywhere in mind. And um, uh, I, I, no, I, I, I don't think really MTU is, 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 is really a problem uh, anymore, if you configure it uh, correctly. Uh, you have to um, encompass the uh, uh, encapsulation for a little bit, that, 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 that's true. So you use uh, Jumbo frames on the underlying fabric? Or? You could, uh, most of the times, uh, yeah. Uh, especially in the data center networks. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, let's thank the speaker. <laughs>